Hello and welcome back to FPV Reviews. Today we're assembling the Gemini V2 fuselage using the high quality laser cut kit from Flying Squirrel Models. So let's get started. We'll do that by separating all of the parts and laying them out in an orderly manner so that we can see them clearly and read the part numbers. We don't have to know where they all go just yet, but it would be good to watch this build video in its entirety before starting assembly. First, we'll need to locate the fuselage side pieces, part numbers 1 and 2. They can be assembled over the full-size printed plans, but today we'll be showing you an alternative method which allows you to build the fuselage while avoiding the additional cost of printing the fuselage plans full-size. You will want to have the fuselage assembly drawing PDF handy, at least on your computer, for parts placement reference. We'll place parts number one and two on a smooth, flat surface with a sheet of plastic underneath to prevent the glue from sticking and glue them together with medium CA. Glue gusset eight over the joint, unless you will be cutting this section out to make a larger access for the underwing compartment. If you're unsure about this, do nothing for now as it can always be added or the section can be cut out later. Next, locate both bulkheads, part number 6, and put them in place without gluing yet. Find the half-inch square pieces of basswood provided with the kit, putting them in place on the fuselage side, aligning them with the front of the forward bulkhead, and marking them at the rear of the aft bulkhead. Cut them to this length, either with a hacksaw or a hobby saw. Apply glue to one side of each of them and glue them into place as far towards the center as possible of the fuselage side, leaving the small ledge at the edge of the fuselage side where the top and bottom sheeting will go later. Locate parts number 26 and 27. Refer to the fuselage assembly drawing to see their orientation. And use a straight edge to line them up with the fuselage side. Glue them into place, making sure that they are straight and flat. Locate bulkhead part number 7 and set it in place without gluing it top side up. Take the 3 8 inch by quarter inch balsa strips provided in the kit, mark and cut them to fit between bulkheads 6 and 7, leaving the ledge for sheeting later. Locate gussets number 46 and number 47, gluing them into place. They will serve to strengthen the joints in the aft fuselage. Locate the tail plate, part number 32, and glue to the aft stringers, aligning it carefully with the top and bottom stringer. It's best to glue to the top and bottom stringers one at a time to ensure correct alignment as this is an important step. Locate vertical stiffeners, part number 23 and 24. Glue them into place, either in their location over the plan, or slide them back until their ends, top and bottom, are flush with the edges of the stringers. Next, We'll remove the bulkheads and set them aside. Flip the fuselage side over. Move the plastic sheet to the top of it. and assembled the other fuselage side on top of that as a mirror image of the first one. This is important, making sure that you build a right and left hand side of the fuselage. If you skipped ahead and built two left sides, it's okay. Just send an email to Wayne and order up a second kit. 
From now on, you may see a second V2 airframe in the background of this video. Now we can go ahead and tack glue in the bulkheads using a square to ensure a 90 degree angle. Then glue the other fuselage half to that. Next, we'll locate parts number 12 and cut some pieces of one half inch square basswood supplied with the kit to form two sandwich style wing mount cross members. Make sure they fit in flush with the top of the lengthwise basswood strips and glue them in. Now use some of the supplied 3 8 by quarter inch balsa stock and glue to the top of the bulkhead part number 6 and part number 7 on each end of the rear payload bay on the top of the fuselage. Locate parts number 19, 20, a second 20, 21, and 22. Starting at the front of the fuselage center section on top of the fuselage, glue them into place working your way back and making sure they fit flush with the fuselage sides. Now flip the fuselage upside down and glue in a 3 8 inch by quarter inch piece of balsa stock across the front of the bottom of the bulkhead number 6 that separates the center section from the payload section. It should be flush with the other stock and the bulkhead's tab should protrude past it. Locate part number 33. Glue it into place in the forward part of the center section of the fuselage, making sure it's flush with the fuselage sides. Then locate part number 34 and glue it directly behind 33. Next, locate parts number 3, number 16, number 17, and two number 18s. Without gluing quite yet, assemble them into a ladder-like structure. Use some clamps to hold the structure into the bottom of the front of the fuselage. This will form the battery tray. Locate bulkhead part number 5 and clamp it into its place firmly as well. Make sure the whole structure is recessed 1 16th of an inch to leave room for the sheeting over it and is firmly up against the part number 6 bulkhead at the back of it. It's now possible to glue it into place without moving the clamps, so go ahead and glue these locations along the bottom and let the glue dry. Now move the clamps to these positions along the top of the structure and glue in these locations. If you have some extra quarter inch stock, it's nice to make stiffeners for the ladder structure, but this is optional. Locate bulkhead part number 4 and glue into place nearly flush with bulkhead part number 5 on the bottom and staggered somewhat on the top. Locate parts number 36, 37, 38, and 39. Starting at the front, glue them to the bottom of the fuselage over the battery tray, making sure that they are flush with the fuselage sides. Locate parts number 17 temporary and number 18 temporary and place them near the top of fuselage, directly above the corresponding parts 17 and 18 of the battery tray, about one inch down. Do not glue them. Locate parts number 25. Paying attention to the end marked front, apply glue to them and clamp them into place, being careful to leave a ledge for the sheeting to be applied over them. There are two for each side, a total of four. Cut to fit two 3 8 by quarter inch balsa strips from the stock provided in the kit, stood upright this time one on top of part 19 and one flush with part 25, aligned with the second lightning hole on the fuselage sides. Glue these into place. 
Locate part number 31 and glue in place, starting by applying glue to the front half only, holding it down until dry, and then doing the same to the back half. You can now remove the temporary spacers. It's optional, but we like to use some scraps from the kit of 1 8 inch balsa to make stiffeners for these sections of the fuselage sides, as they tend to bend inward slightly. This next step is not needed if you follow the written instructions provided with the plans, but we prefer to build a simple jig to align the rear fuselage. It's especially helpful if you're building more than one kit. You need a strip of straight wood 1 and 5 8 inch wide and about 48 inches long. We used a piece of 1 by 2 pine from the local hardware store and added a strip of 1 16 inch balsa to one edge to achieve the perfect width. Next, we marked a center line down the exact middle of the strip. About 4 inches from the end, we drilled a hole directly on center with a 5 30 seconds drill bit and inserted an 832 by 3 inch machine screw tightly in the hole. We drilled another hole exactly 15 centimeters back from the first one and put in a second machine screw. Then we drilled out the wing bolt holes in the fuselage with a, an 11 64th drill bit and inserted the jig into the fuselage putting washers and nuts on top to gently secure it. We then cut a piece of the same width stock to 8 inches long and placed it on the top of the first piece, firmly clamping it in place with its front end aligned with the front end of the parts number 32 tail plates. We inserted some screws to secure it, then removed the clamps. We also drew a center mark on the fuselage itself at the aft end of the payload bay, cut a couple of scrap pieces, and glued them together to form a block that is 3 eighths of an inch thick, inserted this in between the jig and the fuselage bulkhead as a spacer, aligned the marks, and clamped the jig to the fuselage. We found these four scrap 1 8 inch pieces left over from the kit and glued them together in pairs to form two quarter-inch plates. We then clamped them evenly on the outside of the part number 32 tail plates without gluing them, making sure that everything was square and straight. Turning the fuselage upside down, next locate parts number 28 and 30. They can now be glued directly in between parts number 23 and 24, flush with them, and the fuselage sides. Now turn the fuselage right side up and locate parts number 28 and 29. Part number 28 is glued in place exactly as on the bottom of the fuselage, while part number 29 is glued in approximately one inch forward of parts number 23. Next, use a piece of supplied 3 inch by quarter inch balsa stock cut to fit and make a shelf on the rear of the aft bulkhead part number 6. It should lay down and be flush with the lower aft surface of the rear fuselage side. Locate parts number 43, paying attention to the ends marked front. Dry fit them first by putting the front end up to the bulkhead and marking a relief in the rear outer corner of each of them before gluing them into place. Their inner edges may need trim slightly to fit together nicely. Don't put too much effort into making a perfect joint here, as this section will be cut away eventually anyway as a relief for the vertical stabilizer. Turn the fuselage upside down again and make another shelf from 3 8 by quarter inch stock for the lower part of aft bulkhead part number 6. Locate parts number 45, four of them, and glue in these locations to reinforce the fuselage side joints. 
Now, locate parts number 44, paying attention to the end marked front. Fit and glue them to the bottom of the fuselage, taking a bit more care with the joint between them, as this will be part of the finished aircraft. It's optional, but we like to cut some pieces of scrap to achieve better adhesion of the covering material. The clamps and jig can now be removed. To do so, it will be necessary to remove the number 8 screws from the jig. It will then slide right out. Set the jig aside for your next build or if you ever have to realign the fuselage after modification or repair. Locate part number 22 and glue in place on top of the fuselage at the rear end of the large payload bay. Next, from a piece of scrap 1 16th inch balsa, cut some quarter inch wide strips and glue them to the top payload bay stringers. Locate parts number 48 and glue them to the outside of the rear fuselage sides. The fuselage main structure is now complete. Don't forget to visit our website at the links below to find out more about the Gemini V2 and the laser cut kit by Flying Squirrel Models. Subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss future episodes. And stay tuned for the next build videos covering the nose fairing, tail, and wings. Until next time, have a good one.